way back in 1976 when they were still in the B division. Well, here's how they lined up. A couple of names to look out for on the Carrick side. Striker Jeff Ferris, a cup winner with Glenavon three years ago, and skipper Kel McDermott, a wise old head in the defence. Well, down they were missing injured striker Neil Candleish, but everywhere you look, they've got quality players in key areas. The commentator is Mark Robson. Wilson again looking for Doherty up front, but Hamilton clears it. The ball not running just quite as quickly as he wanted it to. And now here's James E. Kirk, and that's Jeff Ferris, who's onside. Well, really, Ferris, a man of his expertise, should have done a bit better there. That was a very, very good ball played through, but you have to say that that was a pretty good chance for Carrick Rangers. There wasn't a defender anywhere near him. But this is Russell, and it's in towards Casey, and a good header from Casey. Robert Casey scored 13 goals this season. Another excellent free kick from Martin Russell, and Casey climbed very well above the Carrick defence. Forward for Cunningham, beaten by Gilmore, and now here's Casey, and that's a good ball out to Philip Major, and Ferguson away on the far post. Screaming for the ball, here's uh, Joey Cunningham, takes on Kel McDermott. Does well, Cunningham. Cunningham, oh, and it was... Here's Russell now. We're on a good run for Martin Russell here. Plenty of players in front of him, and here's Sandy Fraser in space. Fraser, good block the first time, and the second time. But now it's McKeever with a second effort. Oh, there's great charging down by Portadoy on at least four occasions there. Resolute defence, brave defence too. Wilson, McCauley, and now Russell as uh, McKeever in midfield. There he is, McKeever finds Casey. To his right he has a uh, major, but Casey doing it himself here and doing pretty well. And Casey in for Cunningham, and Casey might try one himself. And it was pretty well struck by Robert Casey. Ronnie McFall calls him the Roy Keane of Portadown. And uh, plays, or has played for Portadown in almost every position on the park. Strain in for Ferguson. Good control. Eventually, now uh, Ferris plays it forward, and McCauley's onside. He's got Doherty coming to the six-yard box here, but it's uh, Stewart who gets there. And that was uh, good work from Carrick Rangers, McCauley, and Doherty had just made a wee run. He just should come into the picture any second now, towards the edge of the six-yard box, and he was trying to find him. And looking for Casey, and that was Brian Strain, the captain. Well, in the testimonial season, that would have meant quite a bit if he could have scored an Irish Cup semi-final. He's brought up from the back for his heading ability, not his volleying qualities. And Brian Strain, well, maybe a striker would have been on target, but it wasn't a bad effort. It's in towards Ferguson. Oh, and he should have done better there. It was really a free header. Ian Ferguson, who's... Well, he knows he should have done better. You can see him rolling the eyes there. Another beautiful free kick it was. Ferguson lost the marker. It's Philip Major in the meantime. Casey, once more, is at the near post. It goes a bit further this time. That's Gordon. Kirk gets it away, now McKeever, it's Casey, and spreads it even high for Peter Murray, he's got uh, Martin Russell in front for the ball wide, that's Ferguson though, and here's McDermott forward, Jeff Ferris, time to uh, settle on the ball, now Murray gets the tackle in, Ferris to Coulter, Coulter forward for McCauley, in for Coulter, good work from Carrick, in for Doherty, back there is Major, and probably Carrick's best move of the match. They've had a couple of pretty neat movements here so far. 
Doherty to McCauley. McCauley with a quick cross, in comes Kirk, and that's Stray in there. Now it's Wilson, and Wilson, oh, he lost the ball there, he's got it still though. In for Ferris, Ferris here for a goal for Derek. Well, he scored in the Irish Cup final for Glenavon when they beat Linfield. And now he's got one for Carrick Rangers in a semi. Well, he showed why he's been such a valuable striker over the years there, Jeff Ferris. It was a good ball in, super work by Ferris, the way he managed to turn Stewart. The, the, the ball then ran for him. That's Murray with the cross. Here's Ferguson trying to let off for uh, Fraser. Donachie gets it away. It's in again towards Brian Strain, who'd stayed up there. And here's uh, Ferguson, Fraser. Well, my goodness. My goodness. Ferguson played the ball in, and Sandy Fraser has now missed two fairly glaring opportunities. In for Ferguson, and here's a chance for Fraser, and a great save by Miskelly. Oh, good stuff from the Carrick goalkeeper, and Fraser has missed the target a couple of times. This time he found it, but Biskelly did exceptionally well. So Joey Cunningham with the corner for Portadown as half-time approaches. Martin Russell near post. Brian Strain is up there as well. Russell and Casey! How did he not score? Well, Portadown have missed some chance in this first half. What a good corner it was. Russell with a touch, and Casey, oh, he had the score there. Russell, more familiar role for him on the, uh, on the flank. And a little bit of space here for Philip Major at the edge of the penalty area. And it comes for Fraser. And he's having just one of those days, Sandy Fraser, but... Really, things just aren't going right, but Carrick will worry about that because they allowed Major too much room at the edge of the box. That's another excellent ball by Ferris to Macaulay, and Doherty's touch a wee bit too steamy, but Macaulay does well to keep it in. The cross comes in from Wilson to Doherty, and looks for Kirk, and that was a good strike by Jamesy Kirk. Another well-worked Carrick move. Doherty with a super little layoff here. And a snapshot it was from Burke. That's Colin Crawford and uh, John Muldoon. Colin Crawford uh, is uh, banished from the dugout today, suspended by the uh, IFA, and has to do all his communicating on the phone and walkie-talkie to the bench. Johnson. That's a good challenge again, but the referee this time says it's a free kick against uh, Warren Wilson. And here's a chance now for Fraser again. My goodness, Fraser has had now six or seven opportunities. Well, what has he done to deserve this? He's probably thinking he turned McDermott very, very well there, but credit to Miss Kelly. Dean Gordon heading the ball away, but not to safety. Here's Ferguson, plays it in for Joey Cunningham. Cunningham, and now here's a chance for Fraser, and he's missed another one. But well done, Miss Kelly, again. Well, it's Fraser again here, and look at Miskelly, his positioning was excellent, and he's made a lot of good stops tonight. That's Strain with Kel McDermott. This is Andy Kennedy now, and it's come off Miskelly, and Ferguson comes in, it was Russell initially. And Frank McDonald blows the whistle. Major played it in, that was Andy Kennedy with the first touch, Russell hit it. And it came off uh, Miskelly. Carrick only have one man in the penalty area at the moment, which is understandable. And that one man almost got it. And it doesn't matter because the whistle's gone. Frank McDonald blows for full time and a real Irish Cup shot here at Windsor Park. Jeff Ferris's goal in the 35th fifth minute. Paul of 1992 will come flooding back to him when he scored in the Irish Cup final when Glenavon won. But for this uh, Carrick squad and Carrick supporters, 
their memories will be of 1976 when they last won the Irish Cup and of course then Crusaders won the league championship but it was a quite fantastic performance from Carrick Rangers they deserve it Portadown did not take their chances it's been a problem all season they haven't got a huge support but they have really enjoyed their visit to Belfast tonight the final score again as the Carrick players do their party piece was uh, Carrick won, Klinsman lookalikes the lot of them, Portadown nil. Absolutely over the moon, um, delighted for the players, delighted for the club and it's, it's given everybody a, a fantastic laugh, especially uh, with this new league coming in, we're in Division 1, but it's been a fun, fantastic evening for us. What about the performance tonight? Well, I think it's, the result speaks for itself alone. Uh, the players went out with uh, total commitment, they ran themselves into the ground and that's that's all I asked from them and they've done themselves uh, justice. It was a great result for Carrick, it was the result we wanted and it's the result we knew we could get on the day. Nobody gave us a chance tonight but the boys knew themselves that they could win the game. Everybody battled well, it was a great team performance and uh, we got the right result tonight. And the goal? The goal, well, it just fell to me. Uh, a wee bit of luck and I just hit it first time and luckily enough it went in. And I think I knew, we knew that if we scored early on in the, the first half, we could hold on and win the game, and we did. You joined Carrigan in November. Did you, uh, hand in heart, think you'd be playing in an Irish Cup final again? No, I thought my Irish Cup finals were long finished. But uh, all credit to Carrick. Uh, we battled well throughout the season in the Cup, and uh, we had a feeling inside ourselves that this was our year, and we're in the final now. Unbelievable. First Irish Cup final. Can't believe it. You know, I've got to say. But to beat a side like Porter Down, I mean, a lot of people will see this as a big surprise. Well, we played in our week or two weeks ago and we were 1-1 one one level two minutes to go and beat us 2-1, so on the night we deserved it, like, battled hard, fought and that was just it. The manager, you were banned from the dugout tonight. Yeah. Uh, how did you view the game? Well, I was sitting in the press box. I think they were kicking me out every other part of the ground, so the press man, thanks very much. Uh, they got me in there and I think I had a good seat, seen most of the game. Uh, well, a few ported down men jumping up and down in front of me, but on the whole, uh, Certainly nerve-wracking for 90 minutes, but very enjoyable at the end of it. I'm sure it was. Delight all round for Carrick Rangers. David, what a turn-up. What a fantastic night for Carrick Rangers. Absolutely outstanding. It was at the game, thoroughly enjoyable match, and it was by no way a lucky Carrick victory. They were outstanding. Yeah, the, the Carrick performance was very gutsy, wasn't it? Magnificent to a man, epitomised for me by young Philip McCauley. Outside right, worked his socks off, was taken and tormenting, the, uh, taking on the, the sort of the, the, the porter down back four, tormenting them, and then back helping defence. He epitomised the spirit right throughout the side, and, and they worked very, very hard. And a fellow you know well, Kel McDermott, I thought you had a super game. What can you say about Kel Archie McDermott? <laughs> magnificent, absolutely magnificent. He prompted and prodded, he talked to the young lads, he encouraged, he kept them going, he filled all the gaps, and for me, he belied his 33 years. Right. He was magnificent. Well, let's see the goal. Mr. Ferris supplied that, and what a goal it was. Great ball through Warren Wilson. Jeff turns Alfie Stewart and bang the back of the net. It's quite it was a good ball through, wasn't it? Great ball through. A little bit of luck here. Philip Major goes through his, through his legs, but then Jeff Ferris buries it. Outstanding finish. Great finish. He really holds players off well, doesn't he? Extremely strong. Very, very strong man. And to be frank, Portadown didn't cope with him all evening. I thought he was magnificent. Mm. Portadown, they made a lot of chances, but did, did you feel they hit top gear? It was one of those games where I felt maybe Portadown thought that it was going to be easier than what it really was. I think no matter how good a side you are, and they are a quality side, let's not forget that, they have some fantastic players, but you've got to battle to win the right to play. And I felt on occasions I thought it was just going to happen. And the longer the game went on, it looked less likely. And they were never going to uh, beat goalkeeper Muskelly last night. If Paul, what a if, night for him. If Paul Muskelly had hung his jersey, I think he would have saved a great strike here from Fraser. And a super save. Absolutely outstanding. And he was so bubbly in the interview, he really enjoyed it. Here's another one. Here's another. Sandy Fraser again on his left foot. Stands up very, very well and makes another good save. And finally, a bit of fortune here, I think, David. I think so. 
but as I say, it, it didn't <laughs> right up the face. But I, th I say, I think if Paul had hung his jersey, would have saved it. But a great <laughs> night for him. Yes, it wasn't. He was down there, but not out. Not Stay at all. For the moment, thank you. So, obvious delight for Carrick, bitter disappointment for Portadown. So what did the fans make of that 1-0 win for the underdogs? My goodness, you've got to play for the jersey in your back. If you don't play for the jersey, you're playing for nothing. That's why you the position they're in the day. Eleven players who played as one. Eleven players fighting yes. for their the short, short commitment. The short the commitment, short enthusiasm commitment. for what they were wanting to do. Yes. Poor, the poor Darren weren't interested. I thought it was absolutely rubbish and I think it's about time I fall went. And I think it's, if we got a centre forward, things might improve. And it was absolutely gutless. Carrick's game, that was it, wasn't it? Definitely. Well done. Well done to Carrick. Carrick's game. It's really good for Carrick, you know, for a, a small club, small town. I'm used to the Premier League football and all that there. I thought Carrick boys played the played for the shirt. Paul Miscully had an excellent game. Who would you like to see Carrick play in the final? Linfield. I'll say do, do it again against Linfield, I hope. <laughs> Make like 76. Being the crews won the league in 76, we win the cup, so I hope they can do it again. Yeah, it could be a touch of deja vu. So, uh, Carrick in the final, isn't that the magic of the Irish Cup, David? Without a doubt, it's the romance of the Cup, and they fully deserve to be there. And I don't think they'll care who they meet. Oh, it doesn't matter to them. <laughs> David, thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you. Right, so Linfield and Ards, they have to try again. That replay back at the Oval Wednesday night, 7.30 kick-off with extra time and penalties if required. So no goals at the Oval today and just the one at Windsor last night. And mixed emotions for strikers Jeff Ferris of Carrick and Gary Haylock of Linfield. From David and me, good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh!